On last week's program, tough training, tough decisions. 24 ordinary Irish people have earned an opportunity to be part of the team to cross South Georgia in the footsteps of their heroes, Ernest Shackleton and Tom Crean. With the training complete and the team picked, we join our intrepid armchair explorers as they prepare to embark on their trip to the bottom of the world, where they will go beyond endurance. Truck driver Ender Wright from Westmeath has made it onto the expedition team. He's in the Guinness Book of Records for his 108 mile an hour armchair wheelie but now he's on his way with his girlfriend Mary to the birthplace of Antarctic hero Tom Crean. That's Mary waving. Crean and look at some of the photographs but you can see after been doing so much research and all the training we're after putting in and all we're after hearing about over the last year it's just just sort of kind of moving walking around looking at it and looking at we're going to be heading to the same place and similar circumstances now so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's moving now. I'm very honoured to be asked to play at uh, Tom Crean's memorial today a few tunes on the bagpipes. Jerry hasn't been playing the bagpipes very long. Uh, I'm a little, a little bit nervous, that's all. And uh, it just takes a bit of a while to get the drones, get the drones active and uh, make sure everything works. I wouldn't like to go wrong when there's a big crowd here. This man here, who this monument has been put up for. He is now not alone known throughout Kerry, not alone throughout Ireland, but throughout the world, as one of the greatest Antarctic heroes. We're going to go to his pub for tea and sandwiches, and if you want a pint, we'll have a pint. I'm waiting for uh, Father Tom Walsh to come. He's, oh, you're there, jeez, I didn't see you, Tom. I'm going blind in one eye. <laughs> I was saying to myself, I was saying, where's Tom Walsh? It is a privilege to be here uh, today and we pray that the spirit of Tom Crean may be with you as you go forth and as you travel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and student Cliff Reed's desperate fundraising attempt has to be a success. Cliff's chances of raising the necessary 15,000 euro look quite grim. Fortunately, his friends are there to brighten things up. Just for the sake of, of, of brightening up the night, yeah. we decided that we do this just for the hell of it. Yeah, you know? At this stage, it's uh, close on panic. 
Basically. Uh, we have a lot of money to raise, a uh, lot of ideas, and not a lot of time. Cliff is a very proud of Thai man, and unfortunately a lot of people aren't proud of a Thai. A lot of Thai people aren't proud of a Thai, Cliff is. And fair juice it's about local pride. Yeah. It's a very, very important factor. Yeah. And the fact that there is a local man doing something fairly momentous and physically extremely demanding. And it's going to take a lot out of him. But um, that, uh, we're not actually worried about that part of it because he's got it in. Pat is sending the team equipment and provisions to Ushuaia at the southern tip of Tierra del Fuego. All going well, it should be waiting for him when they get there. Well, that's it. 11,200 pieces of equipment heading south to the Antarctic. All of this will be shipped out tomorrow, and the next time we'll see it, will be on the ship itself as we set sail. Ice axe, crampons, snowshoes, personal equipment. Two and a half years of the planning. Yeah. Starting now and uh, can't wait. October 1914 and war was breaking out across Europe. Shackleton contacted the British Admiralty. He asked them if they wanted to use his ship, the Endurance, for the war effort. Or should he continue in his attempt to make the first crossing of Antarctica? Winston Churchill telegrammed a single word in reply. Proceed. So he did. The perception that Shackleton was British stemmed from the fact that his expedition was British funded and he was a captain in the British Merchant Navy, but he was and remained an Irishman, as indeed was his right-hand man, Tom Crean. Shackleton was born in this house in Kilkee, close to Atai, home to fellow Kildare man Clifford Reed. Cliff's fundraising is at crisis point, but he's desperate to go and represent the great man's hometown. This is the actual house of Ernest Shackleton. He was actually born here. I've had several people say to me, why are you going on an expedition representing an English guy? This guy was Irish. He's 100% Irish. He was born in that house. You know, what more can you say? We're five miles from a tie here. And it's for that reason that I think we should have someone from South Kildare um, going on this expedition and, uh, you know, flying the flag for for our area, you might say, um, and honouring this guy, our local man here. Pat will ship most of the expedition equipment in advance, and in a cute move, tries to get a little political muscle on his side. Well, we're going to meet the Argentinian ambassador. I'm just scared crapless like about the fact that, you know, if it's a case I can't get out of customs for one reason or another. So by meeting the ambassador today, hopefully if there's anything does go wrong, that we'll have the political contacts to be able to move it fast. You can have all the, the support you may need. The, the but people it, know that you're there yes. and what you're doing. And if we have a little problem, we yeah. can contact you. Let's somebody. hope you won't. No, no, I'm sure we won't. I'm sure we won't. Cliff has organised to meet with Pat and his friend Fergus in Dublin a condition of making the team 